Good afternoon, everyone. Glad to be here. And I'm glad to uh, share with you my views about uh, what the challenges for SMEs are, uh, as well as uh, some of the things that uh, we in the Association of Small and Medium Enterprises are trying to do to, to help along the way. Um, I think one of the uh, things I've noticed in the last uh, 10 years of, uh, well, 14 years of being in this association and being in the work with SMEs is that in the last 14 years, I think there's been a market difference in terms of how the, the whole economy and uh, population and, and um, the government and businesses view SMEs. Um, and I think what we have noticed is that uh, people realize and people have been looking at SMEs uh, as a very important part of, of uh, Singapore's economy. And you hear more and more people talking about that. I think it's a, a great thing for us to, to see that happening. Um, at the same time, um, what we also realize, uh, if you look at the slide here, I can, uh, the SME actually is, it covers a very large uh, segment of the economy, right? It covers uh, uh, pretty much all the businesses are covered under the, the broad definition of SME. So um, a lot of times when you talk about mm, helping SMEs, um, different people actually have different perspective of what an SME is. And uh, I think it's quite important that we, over, uh, over time, if we are interested in this topic, we start to understand the differentiated needs of uh, different segments uh, of, of this uh, broad grouping called SMEs that's grouped by turnover of less than 100 million and, uh, and or uh, less than 200 staff. So as, as long as you, you fulfill either criteria, you are considered an SME. So it's, it's actually a very, very broad uh, grouping of people, right? So I want to start by just uh, sharing a bit about the broad trends uh, that impacts our businesses, uh, SMEs. Uh, but I think it's not just related to SMEs. I think it, it impacts all businesses, uh, not, and, and maybe not even Singapore. I think regionally and even globally, right? Some broad trends that we see. Um, first is that I think, you know, for SMEs here in Singapore and maybe the country on the whole, that there are external challenges that uh, we, we face, right? Um, broadly, if you look at it, there are geopolitical shifts. I think uh, the previous speaker was talking exactly about that, where these challenges around uh, the tensions. And the, the implication, I think, is if you look at, at that from a geopolitical perspective, is that a lot of the businesses that used to have a certain way of doing things no longer uh, can do it the same way. Um, you know, I have SMEs that, that had to change the way they supply, they have to change the sources of the, 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 the steel that they, they make, and all of that impacts the way the cost base of their business are, are built on and impacts their margins, impacts their profitability. Um, pandemic, of course, uh, we realized that there was, uh, we were reliant on certain aspects of, of a supply chain that then made us question uh, whether we should diversify our sources of supply chain. Uh, all countries actually ask that. And of course, uh, we have ongoing conflicts and tension that, that has been impacting uh, s aspects of our supply. And uh, this issue is still ongoing and hopefully it doesn't, doesn't get uh, uh, more serious. And of course, we have uh, BAPs uh, that, you know, particularly I think impact Singapore in terms of our ability to um, attract uh, foreign investment the way we used to do it. And I think that that has implications for, for the country on the broader scheme of things, right? Um, the other broad trend is, is uh, the growth of AI. I, I think that uh, it's not just AI, but you're talking about broadly technology. But um, when it comes to AI, it is a very, very high investment and high capital game that um, if you look at a uh, smaller enterprise, you know, you you have limited capacity to compete or try to compete in the same nature. Um, even on the national level, you know, the kind of investment that the government uh, has shared about investing, I think doesn't match that of uh, the top few companies that, that are putting in uh, investment. So, so it is a challenge, right? 
And then, of course, we have nearshoring. And uh, in this case, certain countries are benefiting a lot more than, than others, right? And uh, we've got to be clear uh, how it also impacts our businesses. Um, internal challenges, right? Uh, within the country, we, we are dealing with additional complexities in terms of regulations and costs. I, I, I stated some examples like PWM and a progressive wage model and a flexible work arrangement. Um, and, and this will continue to have, right? And I think our Prime Minister shared about um, trying to reduce regulatory compliance uh, requirements in his National Day Rally. I think it's an ongoing process. You're going to get more of these new regulations. At the same time, we've got to look at optimization. So that, that weighs on the SMEs as they try to regulate, uh, try to navigate this regulation and look at how to optimize their processes to deal with this. At the same time, attract people, right? Um, costs, we all know about increasing manpower costs. Um, the, the concern also from our perspective, right, as an association is... It's not just about increase in manpower costs. You have that on one hand. And on the other hand, there's also a challenge uh, about um, competitiveness, right? I think that Singapore has created a very competitive work workforce over the last uh, five decades, six decades, right? And um, a, lot, a large part of it is having a workforce that's very uh, industrious and competitive, but over the last uh, 10 years or so, I think that the concern from business owners were that um, there has been an increased focus around um, how, how do you uh, balance the needs of the business against the needs of the workforce uh, and work-life balance, right? And underneath it all, the concern from uh, the SMEs uh, in this perspective is really around are, are, are we going to be competitive is Singapore going to be competitive? You know, so it's not just about individuals, but we as a country, if we emphasize too much on having flexibility, having work-life balance, not that we don't, but I think this is, is I, th I think it's two different conversations. But are we going to be able to maintain and keep up with our competitiveness plus the fact that we are so expensive and other aspects, right? So I think the the, the question is is a SME uh, imperative. But at the same time, I think it's also a national imperative. Um, and then lastly, uh, market competitiveness. Singapore is a very small market. But you know, it's very interesting that you see all the uh, brands that come out of their respective uh, countries all love to come in here and start their regional business with, with Singapore as a springboard, right? So we, we face increased competition uh, from foreign uh, companies that are looking to expand their, their presence abroad. So that also drives up a uh, cost, whether it's rental or it is uh, manpower. Um, now, I, I think that broadly uh, from ASME as an association perspective, I, I think that uh, we want to look at really keeping the ground watered. Um, the, the, the fact is that I shared earlier that SME is a very, very broad group. And if, if you look at it, this is just a very, very rough uh, uh, segmentation, right? But the majority of uh, SMEs are small and micro. And then you have the small to medium, and then you have the medium and large, which, which are not SMEs, right? But the, the important part is that as we look at all of this um, competition, as we look at the need for Singapore to to now compete on a global level with, with all these trade flows and changes, right? There may be a, a, a risk in which we start looking uh, less on watering the ground and keeping our base uh, stable and, and growing and more on just looking at how to compete and how to make sure our large enterprises can compete. But I wanted to say that it's always a funnel, so it's really important to keep our SMEs, small and micro, also well taken care of so that, it, that we, we can continue to create a cycle of, uh, of businesses that go from small to medium to large. And I think it's really important as we look at all of that. Lah. So I wanted to just uh, share this as a reminder for, for everyone. Um, so from that perspective, what, why I put this slide up is that I think that uh, for many people, we because of the last 10 years, we, we have talked about more and more of uh, 
you know, the needs of SME and the need to take care of it, right? I think that there's a lot of uh, conversation and people talking about helping SMEs. But ironically, uh, there are many uh, programs that when we look at it, you know, they are very, very narrow or, or they really don't take care of the broad base that, that we talked about that you saw in my previous slide. So uh, what it results in is that sometimes when you look at the market, there's more and more noise in the market that people are saying they're helping. But reality is that the real programs that are happening are not really landing. So that, that's one of the concerns that on, on the association side we have. And um, from association perspective, I think what we see as uh, what needs to be done for the SMEs has a few areas. Lah. So this is just, just a slide to share a bit about what we as an association are doing. But I think it's a recommendation more on a broader base, right? If you're an SME or you're helping, I think you can look into these areas. Um, what we want to really look at from an association is really take a grounded approach, right? Really look at what's going to impact on the ground and deal with what's on the ground. And we have uh, focused on a few areas of um, uh, problem statement that SMEs uh, need to have. And then we think that we can, you know, think far, at the same time, uh, execute, think about execution on the ground that's, that is really, really important. Okay, so I'm going to run through these slides. I think these slides have been uh, spoken about at various, uh, not these slides, but these topics have been spoken about various times and by various people uh, for a lot of times. What I hope to provide is a slightly different spin around the same topic. Um, um, so for example, in uh, digital transformation, I think that the general thinking is that, uh, for example, you know, I just put up a few general general points, right? And, and um, I wanted to share about the view so that we can, we can uh, look at how we can do better, right? Um, Broad-based grants, you know, that you guys know about in the last 12, 15 years, right? Uh, and support has resulted in a lot of abuse. Um, I think uh, there's also a view that it's better to touch, tie up with large firms for success, right? Um, and if you look at a lot of the tie-ups, uh, it's usually with larger firms or well-known multinationals. Uh, we think that actually, you know, the alternate view or our view is that the broad-based grant has actually resulted in the transformation of the industry. I think if you look at any uh, kind of structure, there's always going to be abuse. The question is how do you iteratively improve the situation, you know? So it has created a transformation. So, you know, when I look at it, that's what I've seen in the last 15 years. Um, actually, it's the KPIs on the broad-based grants that need to be more nuanced to actually slowly improve on uh, abuse and other aspects, right? But when keep in mind when I'm saying all this, it's really about uh, helping bring up the SMEs on a broad-based level upwards so that the whole nation becomes more competitive. Um, you know, digitalization, this whole exercise, including AI, continues to be very critical. And uh, larger digitalization uh, efforts has been also reduced uh, right now if we look across the board uh, because of um, reduced grant support. And maybe there are various reasons, like, you know. Um, I think we should strengthen SME's uh, ability to develop and innovate and also be wary about turning SMEs into uh, consumers of technology. Uh, this is a very interesting point because I think that the foundation of Singapore's uh, continued uh, success right, has to be based on innovation, based on development. But the one of the thinking that unconsciously creeps in if you listen and you, you, you read, right? Is that, hey, we are a small country, so how do you compete, right? But I, personally, I don't subscribe to that thinking because fundamentally, we are a small country, right? <laughs> Since 1965, we are small. So I think that it's really important that we try to uh, be able to continue to compete no matter how small our size is. And I think we... we we always say that we are exceptional and I think we've got to believe and walk the talk, right? And um, we've got to continue to emphasize and continue to support that and uh, not go with the easy way where maybe it's less risky to go with uh, maybe sometimes uh, partnering a large corporation when you can partner with five smaller organizations. That I think would, would really help um, bring us forward in terms of tackling the challenges that SMEs are facing. Well, I, 
because I'm speaking to a wide audience. Lah. So, so what I'm sharing here can have various takeaways depending on what roles and, and, and uh, uh, what, are you, what you do right, for, for a living. So there's uh, the area on, around transformation. So I mean, these are just some stats around how transformation has made impact to SMEs. And um, I think continually, we, it's important that we keep doing that because it is a never-ending exercise to, to, to improve on that. And I have SMEs that are now telling us that uh, they are intensively, some of them, intensively using AI to replace certain aspects of their uh, um, PA work or some of their consulting work that some of the uh, executive are handling and is to some degree working quite well. So I think that continued digitalization is quite important and we've got to continue to emphasize that it's about development and innovation that we need to empower SMEs with, not just uh, being consumers of technology. And, and, and that's, that's a risk because I think large co corporations would always want you to be a consumer of the technology. Then they have a, a lifetime uh, revenue stream, right? And, and, and that's natural, right? And, and for us, if we want to be competitive, we've got to understand that and we've got to kind of support our SMEs to, to grow in a different way. Um, on our side, uh, on association side, we actually take action on the ground to make this happen. Um, recently, we just organized a national uh, prom competition. Um, uh, the unique thing about this prom competition was that it, it, no uh, prior knowledge is required to, to write prompts. And we provided a one full day training uh, to, to uh, figure out how to write prompts and teach you how to use more advanced technologies like retrieval augmented generation and other techniques to improve on uh, quality of uh, using LLM uh, and AI. So the whole idea is not just being a user, but to look at how to innovate, how to be productive using the, the whatever tool that's been given to you so that's, that's uh, some of the things we do. Lah. So workshops and we conduct that on the ground. So our question is really about how to take technology and not just, uh, just simply use it, but how do, you, does, how do you get value from that? And, and that's, that's the question that we always ask ourselves. Um, the next one, of course, is a very uh, well-known topic. is around talent and innovation, right? Um, I think that uh, this, this, the, the general landscape is, you know, Human capital is very important and technology and human capital sometimes kind of, you know, on, 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 on the sliding scale. But I think SMEs uh, overall can do a better job of managing human capital. That's, that's, that's well known. Um, at the same time, we also got to understand that um, SMEs uh, are very uh, loyal in general, uh, very loyal to the, the staff, very, very ironically. So if you look at uh, challenges when it comes to uh, bad economy. Usually SMEs don't uh, just simply let go of the staff. They, they keep them and they try to, even if they don't have to uh, draw salary as bosses, they, they will try to keep the staff. So I think SMEs in this case on, on talent, right? Uh, on one hand, some, some will say that the productivity level and value adds not very high. On the other hand, SMEs actually are hiring a lot of the people who otherwise wouldn't even get a uh, get hired in MNCs. So we are absorbing a lot of uh, the, the talent and retaining them. So I think it, it does its job, lah, right, in, in the overall ecosystem and it keeps that balance there. Um, the general thinking around this uh, uh, I wanted to share is that, you know, if you look at media, you look at uh, 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 a lot of the conversation, usually it's kind of put at the workforce and, and businesses at loggerheads. You know, it's either this or that. You, you either have uh, work-life balance or you lose productivity. Uh, I think that, importantly, you know, we got to see that we are all on the same ship, right? And uh, I think it's really important that business owners, uh, SMEs, uh, workforce, see that we are on the same uh, ship, right? And we're all part of one family. And uh, it doesn't mean that you must have this and you, you lose that we look at how everything can come together as, a, as a one family. Uh, so on our side, we try to look at you know, promoting uh, policies, promoting examples, uh, showing examples of companies that have implemented, showing best practices, and uh, sharing this and try to drive SMEs to have more uh, advanced, more um, 
forward-looking uh, uh, human capital practices. Um, the next thing on sustainability, this is also a very popular topic. You, if you read the news, it's always on the news, right? So there's, there's this worldwide emphasis around uh, ESG. And um, we, we have actually looked at it and ESME has an action group la, on ESG. So the general view is that SME should get on the bandwagon of ESG, right? But from our own assessment for the last almost one year, uh, ever since looking at this, is that... For most SMEs, the E actually holds very little significance, okay? Uh, not that we don't care. <laughs> you know, I think turning off the lights, literally, or, or, you know, looking at more sustainable form of transport for yourself and your, your staff is quite important. But overall, in the big scheme of things, uh, most SMEs have very little to contribute in improving the E aspect of things. But then, uh, the S and the G actually has a large area that SMEs can improve. So, I think that our focus is really around the S and G for most SMEs, unless you're in the specialized, specialized field where you're in manufacturing or you are, you're in logistics, supply chain, then I think the E applies. Right? So I think it's quite important to look at what really impacts us and then deal with that. Um, so these are some of the activities we, we are doing. And currently, we're trying to run a, a survey on the ground to assess whether consumers are actually willing to buy more or pay more for uh, ESG certified product. Most of the time you, you read and people say, actually, yeah, yeah, I'm willing to buy more. But in reality, SMEs on the ground are saying, hey, I don't see that. You know, I think people are still going for the cheapest. So we are trying to run a survey to, to go into the, the details or rather a, a more properly structured survey to really assess if this is the case and, and share that information. Um, I think uh, lastly is around internationalization. Um, the general thinking is that uh, businesses should secure the home base before going abroad. Uh, we should support SMEs, uh, sorry, MNCs, because they will provide uh, education, uh, uh, employment here. And, um, you know, uh, we should have a merit-based approach towards selecting your partners. Uh, Singapore is very big on merit. Uh, so if you look at um, many organizations that go overseas from different countries, you find that uh, Singapore doesn't really have a tendency to go together. Singapore companies or the GLCs or the larger enterprises that are abroad, they usually would select what they say is the best fit lah, for the job, right? Uh, Korean companies, Chinese companies would go together as a group. And uh, that's tradi tr general traditional thinking. Uh, what we think lah, is that um, actually the, the securing home base approach may not apply nowadays. Um, I think businesses, especially Singapore businesses, because we are born in a small little red dot, right? We don't think about scale from day one. So I think you need to design your business for scale uh, from day one. Um, I think that we should support SMEs because we're at the era where uh, SMEs need to now go bigger. MNCs and the approach to just attracting MNCs to grow the economy may not be the the only way going forward. I think we really need to look at how to support the SMEs. Um, a collaborative approach towards selection. So instead of purely just going for merit, right, I feel that it will work a lot better for Singapore's uh, economic growth and development that we start to team together. And I think it's part of our education system. We're very competitive since school, right? We'll always uh, compete with one another to, to, to get the top score. So it's not very much in our DNA to collaborate and work together. But I think there's something we have to do to, to collaborate and, and uh, in terms of bringing people together. And, uh, and we should view Singapore as the capital of the region because we always hear Singapore is very expensive, very expensive, right? But if you look at us as a, as a capital kind of thinking, then you will start looking at how to you know, distribute your, your costs around the region, whether it's manpower or whether it's... Uh, 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 production costs in, in different areas and that I think would allow us to have a more regional at least not maybe not international approach towards uh, building our business so I think uh, that that's what I have to share um, thank you